Okay, so in this video, we will consider our first example of integration by parts. If you remember, integration by parts is the following equality. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So the first question is always, how do we choose our u? And if you look here, there are two functions we can choose from. There's the function x and the function ln of x. Which one do we choose for our u? If you remember, the rule of thumb is that u must be the function whose derivative gives us the greatest simplification. So let's see what I mean by this. So we have the function x. If we differentiate x, we get 1. So we do get a simplification, right? Going from the equation y equals x to y equals 1 is a simplification. What about ln of x? we take ln of x and we differentiate ln of x, we get the function 1 over x, which is also a simplification. Now be careful that when I say that u is the function whose derivative gives the greatest simplification, I do not mean the simplest derivative. Clearly 1 is simpler than 1 over x. So you might think, well, okay, the derivative of x is simpler than the derivative of ln of x, so we'll take u to be x. And the answer is no. I am saying that we want u to be the function whose derivative gives the greatest simplification. So which is better, going from the simple function x to the simpler function 1, or going from a complicated logarithmic function to a simple function 1 over x? As far as a simplification is, it's much better to go from a logarithmic function to the simple function 1 over x than it is to go from x to 1. This is a simplification, but this one is a much better simplification, and that's why we choose u to be ln of x. Again, this is a rule of thumb, but it works in most cases. And now well, let's see how we have to work this out. Let me just rewrite then x ln of x as ln of x times x. And once we choose our u, we want our integral to be of the form integral of u dv. So whatever we choose our u to be, in our case ln of x, we have no choice for the dv. We want the whole integral to be the integral of u dv. So whatever is our choice of u, everything else must be dv. So dv must be x dx. And now again, we need from u to find our du, and from dv to find our v. Well, to go from u to du, we differentiate. So the derivative of u with respect to x, as u is a function of x, is simply 1 over x. Again, we want du, so to solve for du, multiply by dx. And so du is quite simply 1 over x dx. So now we have our du. Well, we need our v. We have dv. We want to go from dv to v. But of course, v is quite simply the integral of dv. dv being x dx, so we can replace in the integral dv by x dx. And of course, the integral of x dx from the power rule is x squared over 2. And here be careful not to add the plus c. As we have seen in the previous video, if you add the plus c, it will cancel out in the subtraction, and so it will serve no purpose but to make your expression be more complicated than it actually has to be. So when you solve for the integral of dv to give you the v, don't add the concept of integration. So v is now just x squared over 2. I can put it here. And now we have everything we need. We have our u, we have our du, we have our dv, we have our v. And so now we can go from the left-hand side, which is our integral, to the right-hand side, just replacing all the four quantities with what we've just found. So the integral of u dv equals u 
that's ln of x, times v, that's x squared over 2, minus the integral of v, x squared over 2, du, 1 over x dx. And now we have our new problem. So the integral of x line of x dx is this function minus this integral. And you see the trade-off. We have the original integral, and now we have the new integral. And hopefully, the new integral is easier than the original one. And if you look here, the ln over x has disappeared. After we simplify, we'll have a power rule here, which will be trivial. So indeed, the new integral, after we used by parts, is much simpler than the original one. So now we're essentially done. I'll write the x squared over 2 first, so x squared over 2 ln of x, minus the 1 half I'll pull out as a constant multiple, and of course x squared over x is simply x, and so we get the integral of x dx. So x squared over 2 ln of x minus 1 half, and the integral of x dx is very simple, power rule x squared over 2 plus the constant of integration. And now we're basically done, although this looks a bit silly. Let's multiply through and simplify a little bit. So x squared over 2 ln of x minus, well, a half times a half is a quarter, so minus x squared over 4. And now we have minus 1 half times c, or if you prefer, minus c over 2. But here, we can rewrite this in a simpler way. If you think of what c is, c is an arbitrary constant. Well, if c is an arbitrary constant, so is negative c over 2. So we can here abuse the notation of c and replace this by c. As we understand that all c stands for is an arbitrary constant. So in the end, we can write x squared over 2 ln of x minus x squared over 4 plus some arbitrary constant. We still call it c. And so that's it. So we can write now our conclusion, the integral of x ln of x dx using integration by parts is x squared over 2 ln of x minus x squared over 4 plus c. And we're done. Now if you wanted to, I'm not going to do it here, but you could factor an x squared over 2 from these two terms and have in the end x squared over 2 times ln of x minus a half. One last short comment. As always, we can verify that our answer is the right answer as we supposedly have found an antiderivative of x ln of x. So if we differentiate our answer, we should get back the original function. So just for fun here, let's do this. This is what we claim is our antiderivative. So let's differentiate it, f prime of x, and hopefully the derivative of this function, and we can ignore c because the derivative of a constant is zero, so it gives you nothing. So if we differentiate this, we should get x ln of x. Well, we have a product rule here. So derivative of the first function 2x over, over 2 is x, so it's x times ln of x, plus, by the product rule, the first function, x squared over 2, times the derivative of the second function, which is 1 over x. So this is the derivative of x squared over 2 ln of x from the product rule, minus, of course, the derivative of this function, so negative 2x over 4 from the power rule, sorry, And let's see if in the end we're left with x ln of x. So we have x ln of x. If we simplify, what do we have here? x squared over x is just x, so we have an x over 2. 
Of course, 2 over 4 is 1 half minus x over 2. So x over 2 minus x over 2 cancels. And we're left with what we hoped for, x ln of x, which is the original function. Just to verify that our first example of integration by parts gave us the right antiderivative. And that's it.